Joining us now is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Chair of the Board of Children's Health Defense and their senior prosecuting attorney as well. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between these federal regulatory agencies and these drug and vaccine companies. The Journal of American Medical Association just published an examination of the FDA, and this review, which was by a number of Harvard researchers, reveals a shift towards the FDA's use of, quote, less data to approve drugs and an escalating reliance on pharmaceutical industry payments to actually cover FDA salaries. Now, when it comes to an organization like the CDC, we have the example of Julie Gerberding, who was CDC director from 2002 to 2009 and then went on to become the head of Merck vaccines. Is it common for CDC and FDA employees to use this kind of revolving door? Well, there are many, you know, they're revolving door problems with all of our federal agencies and, and all of our state agencies. There's a phenomena that is very well documented called agency capture, which is a phenomenon or a dynamic by which the agency that, um, that's supposed to protect the American public from bad drugs or from pollution or what have you ultimately becomes a subsidiary or a sock puppet for the industry that it's supposed to regulate. And indeed, um, that's what we see with the CDC. The head of CDC from 2002 to 2009, as you point out, was Julie Gerberding. She did a number of billion dollar favors for Merck. She silenced a whistleblower who was um, William Thompson, who is still a scientist at, at the CDC who wanted to tell the public that testing of Merck's vaccine showed that particularly the MMR vaccine was causing autism in black boys and other people who got the vaccine on time and that the scientists had been ordered to destroy data showing that effect and that they went ahead and published the study uh, lying about it to the American people and the physicians. And Julie Gerberding did a huge favor to Merck by having that scientist punished and then silenced. She, uh, she arranged for Merck to get the uh, monopoly to the multi-billion dollar MMR vaccine and to make sure Glaxo could not sell its vaccine in this country. She approved the, um, the HPV vaccine, Gardasil, which is another Merck product. She approved the chickenpox vaccine and the silenced whistleblower Gary Goldman, that was another doctor who said this vaccine is going to cause a shingles epidemic. Merck then not only got the chickenpox vaccine, but it also was able to market a, a shingles vaccine. She retired in 2009 and she was made president of Merck's vaccine division in 2010 with a salary of about $2.5 million, I think about $5 million in stock options. The CDC is actually a vaccine company. The CDC has a total budget of about $11 billion a year. It spends $5 billion of that buying vaccines from those four companies at making sweetheart deals that are much higher where we pay ta with back taxpayer money much more for the vaccines than they pay for the exact same vaccine in Europe. And then they distribute those vaccines to the American public. So they're approving the vaccine. They're mandating for them for the public. They're buying them from these companies who they're friends with. And then they're, um, they're basically forcing million, 78 million people to take an untested product. The CDC also owns patents on many of the vaccines. In fact, across HHS, which is the mother agency, FDA, CDC, and NIH, which all regulate vaccines, different parts of the vaccine industry are all parts of HHS. And those agencies are allowed to hold patents on the vaccines that their scientists work on. And, the, and then collect royalties. And in fact, officials in those agencies who worked on the vaccines can also own part of the patent and collect royalties of up to $150,000 a year. So every bottle of Gardasil that is sold, HHS is making money on it. They make tens of millions of dollars a year. So you have the regulatory agency actually making money by pushing 
by mandating this vaccine to people and then collecting money on it and ignoring the health effects when people are injured. And these are zero liability products. No matter how toxic the ingredient, no matter how um, grievous your injury, no matter how negligent the company, you can't sue them. They can do anything they want with a vaccine and you can't do anything about it. Now the four companies that make all 72 of these vaccines, Merck, Sanofi, um, Pfizer, and Glaxo, are all convicted felons. Those four companies in the last decade have paid over $35 billion in damages and penalties in fines or criminal fines for defrauding regulators, for falsifying science, for lying to doctors, for lying to patients and customers, for killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. You know, for example, Merck's flagship product before it put Gardasil on the market was Vioxx. Vioxx killed between 120,000 and 500,000 Americans. It was a, a pill that Merck marketed as a headache pill that caused heart attacks. Merck knew that it caused heart attacks because it knew it from its clinical trials, but it decided not to tell anybody. Most of those people who took that pill for a headache or for arthritis pain probably would have taken an aspirin if they knew that pill could have killed them. It requires a kind of cognitive, a weird cognitive dissonance for people to think that this same company, which is making most of our vaccines, is lying about its medical products and killing people, and is lying about its medical devices. But somehow it's decided to tell the truth about vaccines, which is the only product where it can never get caught. The only reason that all of those companies that Merck got caught on Vioxx and those other companies got caught on their other products is because private plaintiff's attorneys representing injured clients sued the company, got discovery documents that showed criminal behavior, and then walked those documents down to the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's what happened in Vioxx. The only place that could never happen is with vaccines, because you can't sue them. So there is no discovery. There are no depositions. There are no document searches. They can get away with it forever. And even if they get caught, there's nothing you can do about it, because you can't sue them. Uh, it's crazy to think that, you know, and a lot of Democrats in our country, and I'm a Democrat, and the, but this led to these mandates are being pushed by Democrats across the country, and they will tell you, yeah, these, these companies are corrupt. They gave us the opiate crisis, and they knew they were going to do it, and they did it anyway, and to think that those same companies somehow, you know, are, are corrupt on every other product, but somehow when it comes to vaccines, they found Jesus, and they're not going to do that when they know they can't get caught. I'm, uh, by the way, I'll make one last point. These companies today are making $60 billion a year selling vaccines, and they're making about $500 billion a year, half a trillion dollars, selling the albuterol inhalers, the Advair for asthma, the Adderall and Ritalin and Concerta for ADHD, the diabetes medication, and, all, and the anti-seizure drugs, and all of these uh, medications for the chronic diseases that are caused by vaccines. That is a, a really good business plan for them a really bad health plan for the United States of America. The UN's World Health Organization says that anti-vaxxers are among the top 10 global health threats of last year, 2019. What's your reaction to the movement against vaccinations, or rather unsafe vaccinations, being characterized in this way? Well, you know, that's part of pharma's strategy to, um, to mandate vaccines for every man, woman, and child in the world, and to give us all the IDs, and to make it so that we can't travel, we can't drive a car, we can't, exercise, we can't get an education, 
we can't exercise our constitutional rights unless we coercively consume, you know, by force, their untested zero liability medical products. The World Health Organization, that's really a misnomer. The World Health Organization is even more captured than CDC is. The World Health Organization gets half of its budget from the industry. It is absolutely controlled from top to bottom by the pharmaceutical companies and particularly the vaccine makers who use WHO to, you know, fabricate pandemics like the swine flu, like the H1N1, and make billions of dollars on pandemics that never happen and end up hurting a lot of people in the process and, and using the WHO to dump bad vaccines all over Africa and tell the African countries, you know, you got to take these or you're going to lose your, all of your budget for your health departments and for HIV treatment and everything else. WHO is, a, um, is just a sock puppet for the pharmaceutical industry, and that was, you know, that's part of the pharmaceutical industry's strategy to make us all take untested medical products out. I, you know, I am pro-vaccine, but I want safe vaccines. People call me anti-vaccine because that's a way of shutting me up and marginalizing me and saying, well, you don't have to pay attention to him. He's anti-vaccine. And people who are anti-vaccine are crazy. But I've been fighting to get mercury out of fish for 35 years. Nobody calls me any fish. I, you know, I like to have seat belts and automobiles. People don't say I'm any automobile because I'm asking for something completely reasonable, which is to have a vaccine safety tested the way that every other medical product has to be safety tested. And what I've said to the vaccine industry, to the regulators, to the press that tries to shut me up, show me one study that favorably compares vaccinated children to unvaccinated children and shows that the vaccinated children are actually healthier. And I will post that on my website and I will get out of this business and I'll go back to Waterkeeper and protecting rivers full time, which is what I want to be doing with my life.